Hey, thanks for listening to our podcast. If you want to listen live in the central Indiana area, you can hear us on 93.5 FM and 107.5 FM. Look, everything I'm about to say totally and completely stems from 30 to 40 years of jealousy. All right? Let's, let's get that out there immediately. Started for me in 84, and it, it goes on today. The Steve Alford, the jealous factor of all of us that had to be around Steve in the glory days of Steve Alford being Steve Alford. The only thing that I was glad about is I didn't have to be around Steve Alford when he was in high school and he was taking cheesy pictures to sell for girls on their walls like Sean Cassidy used to and the rest. Uh, so this, this entire interview with Dana Benzinger, Huns, uh, geez, I can't even speak right now. I'm so pissed because Alfred got more publicity. Hunzinger Benba is, uh, is based solely on jealousy. Dana, how are you? I'm good, but I'm scared because I saw the tweet that said you're going to make fun of me. We have to make fun of you. All right. <laughs> are, are you from Indiana? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Wait, let me get this out of the way. When yeah. I was eight. When I was eight, Alfred was a senior in high school. My grandma lived on Riley Road, which was right across the street from Alfred's home. So I would go over and watch Alfred shoot in his driveway, and I one day got the nerve up to knock on his door and ask for an autograph. And his mom answered and said he was studying, and she would take it back for him to sign. And she brought something back out, but I'm still convinced to this day that she just signed it. But I, I was one of those girls, like, in love with Steve Alford. That's, that's, why, that's why I'm making fun of you. Because, okay. because in our group text with a bunch of former players, we're like, dude, you're the only guy ever that could get a young, beautiful woman reporter to fly out and hang out with you for, like, three freaking days. Like, most interviews are done by freaking phone, by Skype. But because it's Stevie freaking Wonder, you packed your bags and you went out to Nevada, took pictures of cameraman, the whole deal, because it's Stevie freaking Sean Cassidy Alford. That's it. Right there, lady. Nope. Guess who was there three days before me who flew out to Reno? Who? Seth Davis. Well, yeah, because because Seth Davis, he doesn't. He's not of the genre that we're we're talking about. No, no, no. The genre we're talking about. You got to understand. Like, I would go with Alfred. I got Alfred. I'm just going to walk behind you and watch everybody in your path like gather and fall down and genuflect and you know blah 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 blah. And he's like, shut up, you're an idiot. Just leave me alone. I go, no, 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 no. So this, no, no, no. This is all about women and their constant adoration for Steve Alford. Nothing to do about Seth Davis. Well, but Seth Davis went out to Reno and did a huge story on him that just posted this week. So it's so it doesn't fit my it doesn't fit my narrative, Dana. Yeah, so I'm trying to, to squash your narrative. Because okay. now you're putting me as like some girl sports reporter who only does stories because I think somebody's cute no, or something. I knew you were going to say that. And that's why I'm glad you said you were one of those girls that fit. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying that Alford has that kind of effect on people from Indiana. That's true. And I told him if he ran for governor of Indiana, I guarantee you he would win without even I I guarantee it. Eric Holcomb's pretty good. No. Oh, yeah. But I'm saying, say, I I, I don't know. I I bet Steve Alford would win. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Why do you feel like he hasn't been able to be the head coach in Indiana? Well, they say the Iowa thing, you know, all the. Pierre, you know, the Pierre stuff with the rape and Evan, I don't know. Like, that's what they say. That once he did that, you know, yeah. and people felt like he stood up for that guy. And I've gotten a lot of people writing me mad about that. Like, you know, why would you do a three-part series on, I think they called him human garbage. So not everybody loves Steve Alford. You know, Dana, but, I was going to, Dana, it's funny. I'm, I'm glad you went there because when Steve, um, you know, wanted the job, they gave it to Archie. I I was a staunch, hey, Steve's got, and I didn't realize how real the vitriol is for Steve when you promote him for something like that, right? I mean, it's real, the vitriol. It's it's unbelievable. I had no idea. Like, people, 
despise him for that. And I mean, it's 17 years ago, it was 2002. And I'm like, wow. So, I mean, I guess when I say, mo- I mean, yeah, most people adore Steve, especially in Indiana, but I can't even tell you how many emails I've gotten calling him names I can't repeat on here. Let me ask you this, because because I, 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 I didn't get him by email. I got him by Twitter. And most of the Twitter folks were from Iowa, um, not necessarily from Indiana. Although I got one yesterday that said, if you support Steve Alford, uh, you support rape. And right. I, don't care, I don't care how many bikes you give away. You're a bad human being. Exactly what he said, actually. I don't care how many bikes yep. you and your wife give away. You're a bad human being. And But, you know, my answer to that, isn't it a little bit like, well, a couple of institutions already – hired the dude i mean uh, yeah that's what i'm saying he got to ucla after that i mean he got you know that's what i'm saying i i guess maybe that doesn't follow with iu not he claims iu never has taught like called him or anything about the job but you say they were talking to him so he's lying to me no I i think i would say that he here let me let me explain to you how he got to iowa okay um no, this is how he got to New Mexico from Iowa. I get a phone right. call from the – so he's, he's, he's telling the truth to everybody, but this is how this goes. I get a phone call from Paul Krebs, the athletic director of New Mexico, says, hey, I want to hire Tony Bennett, but I can't hire Tony Bennett. I got a ton of money, blah, 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 and Paul's been a friend of mine. Would you call would, – would you think that Steve Alford would be interested? And I said, you know, I just had a conversation with Steve a week before, and I do. I think he'd like out of Iowa. Long story short, Dana, I became the conduit for New Mexico and Iowa, meaning Steve could say very clearly, I've never talked to New Mexico. Oh, uh, yeah. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, and that's how Steve does business, whether it's Mike Barnett or whoever it is. That's that's how Steve's pretty smart with that. And so eventually yeah. I'm like, look, dudes, can I get a can I get a freaking uh, uh, finder's fee here? Because, you know, I'm doing all the work. Okay, here. well, wait. Yes. So say if he hadn't been at UCLA, do you think that when Archie Miller job opened, do you think he would have? Do you think he would have? If he wasn't at UCLA, if he was at a smaller time program, I don't think Indiana was going to hire him. Okay. I, Why I do you did. think that is? I, I did at one point. I, I, I Look, when the AD Greenspan, when they hired Samson and then I became the interim coach and all that, he told me, he goes, look, I don't like Steve. I didn't like him mm-hmm. when he was at South Southwest Missouri State. I thought he was an arrogant jackass. I, I would never hire him. I said, okay, that's fine. So he was never talked to at least – seriously by the athletic director in whatever year that was 2007 six eight mm-hmm. whatever it was but i don't know dana i don't know this year so so does steve feel that it is uh does steve feel that it's um it, it, it's the paul pierce thing no pierre pierce he won't, pierre, pierre. Paul pierre, pierre, paul pierce. He won't yeah. even he won't even go there like that's the one part of the interview of course he's good that's what i said He's really good at diverting questions, and he's very good at no matter how many different ways you ask it, he can divert it. So he wouldn't talk about IU. He wouldn't talk about why not IU. He wouldn't talk about, you know, Iowa being – I mean, just nothing. He's like, I don't talk about what if, why. If I don't know, I don't talk about it. That was his answer. (laughs) Can you – Can you? how would you answer this question? I said when I was 22 years old, and I met Steve, and I was around Steve. He was 18 or 19. I said, man, you are the most polished guy I've ever seen in my life with the media. Can you see where? How? He, are you kidding? He was that way all the I thought this was something he gained over 30 years. No. <laughs> no. No. Wow. Where did he get it? I I think, I, truthfully, I don't know. But he was raised by, you know, a dad who. who yeah. As you documented in in your article, it was great articles. But I, I don't mean to tease you about the whole girl. Th- I do mean to tease you about the whole girl thing. The hell with it, I do because it was such a big freaking deal. With all like Alford, you can get people to do anything. You're like God around here, and you're just one of us. You know what I mean? And yeah. people, well, to you, he's just one of you. Yeah. The people <laughs> who, the people, I went and did a story on the Steve Alford Inn couple months ago and those people in newcastle are still obsessed with him so really? to do he's just one of you but to people like us who 
didn't coach, you know, coach and play with him. Right. He doesn't have him on speed dial. You know, he's still this perfect. I feel like people see him as just this perfect guy, except for the Iowa thing. Do you see him after interviewing him as this perfect guy? You know what? I don't know. How will I know? Because I was a reporter there. So is that always how he acts or not? Like I went to his practices and he was hilarious and joking with kids and not screaming too much or, you know, so from what I saw, he seemed like a very polished guy, but I told my photographer, he is like diverting my question. Like he'll, he'll <laughs> completely divert him that he doesn't want to talk about. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, and I say this in all sincerity. I do think he's the perfect guy. I mean, the, the, I do. I always he's do. I'm like, dude. Crush? Well, not, I used to pee on him. You got to understand, Dana. I mean, it, it's different in, in when you're in a shower and you're around, and, you know, and you're being a guy. But he, I always would be like, dude, you smell so good. Like, I wasn't, you know, like I'm from Maryville, Indiana. Nobody, none of us smelled good. Like, dude, you always wear the right clothes. Dude. First guy I ever saw with a backpack. Nobody carried a backpack. We carried our books. He had a backpack. He always, I'm telling you, he, to me, was the perfect guy. And, I, and, and you know, I know everybody's got their thing. If people get mad at you, you're in a public eye. You say something, you do something wrong. You, but, yes, I think he's the perfect guy. And I'm willing well, to say that as a heterosexual male. Right. He's the, per, he's the perfect man. So do you feel like, because I felt like with the Bob Knight stuff, I also felt like he, that is his perfect man. Like, I feel like he never, I mean, he wouldn't say anything against him. I mean, I feel like he just holds him in such high regard. So you guys uh, disagree on that. Yeah, we big, big time. Uh, but we've had different yeah. experience. I was there 16 years. He was there four. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's evolved. That's the Christian in him. Every once yeah. in a while, the Christian, and because I think that Christian stuff, I always asked off, and I go, I'm going to figure out if this Christian stuff's real. Or, you know, this is when we we're like 18. He's like, <laughs> he's like, dude, what is wrong with you? I go, but, but he, uh, that's the Christian in him, I think. I, I really do, because he didn't like coach. He, he didn't like coach even a little bit. And I used to have to call Steve and say, Steve, oh, come on, Dan, what's coach mad about now? What the hell? You know, and, uh, <laughs> You know, and and I'd say, well, I'm supposed to rip you and tell me tell you you're a jerk and quit doing or saying whatever. But that I, I was glad to see, truthfully, I was glad to see that part because tr I mean, quite frankly, not everybody needs to be. I don't want people to feel bad or or feel like I feel about Coach Knight. I hope I hope people don't. And it was it was good that I, I liked that that was in your 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 piece with him. Uh, your article yeah. because I, I like that. That that's a good thing. My my experience is totally different. But again, I, I you know Steve never worked for Coach Knight. He wasn't there as a you know kid that had to kiss Coach Knight's ass to get a job and how you're treated. You know he didn't he didn't have that. He was he was that's gone in the point. NBA. Yeah, you know. four years is not. Yeah, that's no. not a lot of time. No, in the first couple of years you're. You know, you're trying to figure it out, and then you do figure it out, and you you either love them or you don't. But I, I was really glad. I wanted to tell you that. I was really glad that you put uh, that part in. And for me personally, I hope more players come out and say what Steve said. I hope more players don't come out and, and say what I said because I, I, I don't think most players had the experience um, that I had. What did you think? Because he's not taking over a team that's no good. Like, he's taken over – for a guy that revitalized everything about the basketball program there. What what was his thoughts on that? Yeah, but that's the thing. They were amazing last year, but they lost seven of their eight players that took the court last year. So he was like, okay, these guys are even – I mean, he said that the team last year, their average age was older than oh, that yeah. of Phoenix Suns. Yeah. So yes. he – like, Musselman had, like, a really great – Team. So he's actually thinking. He, I asked him like, what, what's a real, like a realistic goal this year? And he's like, I have no idea because I don't know when these guys get out there. He said I may be calling eight timeouts within eight minutes. Like if they start getting behind, the other team gets on a run. What if it, you know? He just doesn't know because. But they, I mean, he was so funny because he was talking to a reporter and he started whispering to me like. Well, I don't know, like these guys, and I'm like, okay, you're, I didn't say it, but I'm thinking you're whispering to me so they don't hear. But I'm writing a story, so right, it's right. probably going to get out that you think they're really inexperienced. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> oh but man, he is beautiful. The uh-huh. pressure, the pressure will never be what the pressure was in UCLA. You know, no. it just won't. He won't. That it's to this probably seems so easy. Oh yeah, and you're at a different part in your life. I mean, even there, he was still trying to build up. Now you're like, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to yeah. do the best I can. But you know, you go, you, you go through enough crap. You know what I mean, Dana? You go through enough crap. You come out the other side. And you're like, okay, what's going to bother me? Nothing. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah, he's on his downward. He's on his downward spiral. Like his contract with Nevada takes takes ten years. There's a look in at year three and a look in at year six. But he could, like, realistically be there until he's 64 or 65. And at that point, that's probably it. Because he said, you know, his sons, he wants them. They both want to be coaches. He wants to follow them, you know, and kind of. So it's possible Nevada's his last stop. I must tell you, when I read your article, and you discussed that in the article, and I saw where Steve Alford could be 65 or 64, whatever it was, it made me puke. I know. Is that unreal to think of him that age? <laughs> no. And I'm like, wait a second. You're older than him. I'm like, no, that fool can't be that age because I know I ain't that age. So how could he be yeah, that 10 age? 10 years, Dan. 10 years, Dan. Man. <laughs> that... You'll be the same age almost. Man, I'll be damn near 70. This walker will be for real that's in front of me, not just because of hip surgery. Holy hell. <laughs> it's just so funny. Like, do you, does it make you feel old that you got a hip replacement? Uh, Dana, it makes me feel so ridiculous. My brother, my brother, who's my best friend, said, "Oh, you're, you know, you're fat and lazy. What do you expect?" I'm like, "Come on, come on, <laughs> yeah, yeah." It makes me feel old. And, and then I'm reading, Steve's going to be 65, but you kept me young because it's like, all right, uh, this is a throwback to the day. People are flying out to talk to Steve Alford, just like we always say, because we used to. You, we, we were brutal, not brutal to him, but it was it was just he was always great with it. We just make fun of the Sean Cassidy and how, you know, yeah. every dad wants their daughter to, you know, and he was legitimately a good like he wasn't like one of them dudes that was you know a conniving fake, which is what no. I've always yeah. What I've, you, you didn't get that sense, did you? No, no. And when you said arrogant, I, I seriously did not get that from him at all. Like he was so willing. You know, to give, I said I needed it. I flew out for like, I said, I'll, I'll take an hour with him. And he let me have the whole night before. And then we went out to Lake Tahoe the next day. And that was his idea. Like, he was so open. And, you know, and honestly, though, when I don't want to keep giving Seth Davis, you know, publicity for his article, which can't, I mean, he ran his after mine, so I beat him. But he did in his say, except for a pudge around his belly, he looks just like the perfect. Steve oh, Alford, we always oh, I know, I know. God, I know. Oh, I'm going to so puke, even Seth right? Davis fell under the spell. I know. It's so disgusting. It's why I had to have you on. It's so ridiculous. The spell. Does he still smell good? Walk me. Th- take me back in time. I didn't smell him. I wasn't, like, <laughs> smelling him. But he like he he's really into athletic gear now. So he gave his whole team fifty gallon buckets of Nevada gear, and he pretty much just had on a different track suit every day. <laughs> and his hair was perfect. And he yeah, I didn't smell him necessarily. But. I'm telling you, you I'm, I've said this for years on the show, and people have thought I was really weird, but that dude smelled good. That dude smelled good. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> And he always had a good sweater on. Like, we, were, who wears a sweater? He always had a nice – it was disgusting. And it's even more disgusting now because you're telling me about the aura and – yeah, yeah, jeez. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's never-ending with this guy. I can t- He just – I sent him a text. I said uh, – what did I say here? I'm si- I said, I'm interviewing uh, Dana now on air. should be embarrassing. So uh, – <laughs> Todd Myers said, hey, are you getting Steve on? Todd played with uh, with us, and he and Steve were senior captains. said, hey, are you getting Steve on to rehash? And Alfred's, no, 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 no. I know nothing. I see nothing. That's Alfred. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> see, you have to, though, because I'm telling you, Dana, I don't know. You may have been that girl. Uh, you may have been that girl growing up that everybody, you know, fawned over, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you, you no, probably. No, 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 no. 
All right. No, but I was I was little, and then with the whole opposite spectrum, I was little bitty when I. I mean, I'm, I was like seven or eight when he came to be, and so. I wasn't like in love with him that way. I just knew my dad always right. talked about him. So, yeah. But I, no, I, I no, I get that. I, I, I no, I totally get. It. If you'd have told me you were thirteen when he was a senior in high school, I'd have said okay. Then you were probably and you know. Thing, I packed my bags to go see Ben Utech. I went and saw Greg Oden. Like, it's not like I only one time packed my bag to go see Steve Alford. Yes, but that doesn't fit my narrative. Okay. I'm just trying to, <laughs> you know I'm not going to let it go because I deal with this stuff enough. <laughs> Did it have to be three parts? Well, yeah. Did we have to read that much be, about him? If, if not three parts, it was going to be an article so long that it took up the entire <laughs> sports section. So, okay. yes, I had to break it into three parts. <laughs> okay. That was my producer, Todd, who's a, a Purdue fan. He's like, did it really have to be three freaking parts on this guy? Haven't we heard enough? <laughs> I'm telling you. It runs it runs deep among 50-something-year-old men. I'm just telling you. It does. Okay, we'll get Glenn Robinson, and we'll go and do a three-part series on him, and that'll make Todd happy. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. That. Glenn would probably just be just as interesting. I don't know what Glenn's. I think he's in Atlanta, but uh, I don't, yeah. I don't even know where he is. I was yeah. like, I'll fly and do something on him. No, I, I, in all seriousness, uh, I thought the article was really good, and and I was glad, as I said earlier, about the coach tonight. So I was glad to see uh, that he's doing good because even with us, everything's great. You know, what I mean, even with good. even with, yeah. and I don't I don't pretend to be his best friend. I don't even know if. You know, I don't even know if we're great friends, but I know this. Whenever something comes out, I got to make fun of them. I just do, particularly yeah. here in the state yeah. of India. Like every time I drive by the Indiana, what you call it, the Steve Alford Inn, uh, yeah. I take a picture and decide how I'm going to send it to him. You know, the, the on on 70 there, the the sign. I'm like, come on, man! It's a freaking ho- yeah. It's a it's a freaking holiday refurbished garden inn or something. Stop with the whole thing. It's in Newcastle. What the hell's there? Stop. Stop. Damn it. I tried to stay there. I tried to stay there a few months ago when I did the story and they were booked. Now, let me ask you a question. Why would they be booked? <laughs> I don't know. There was some, like, um, midget car race at the Newcastle Speedway. That's the only thing I could figure. Mm. Because I was like, I cannot believe this place is booked. When I, The one night I come to try to stay in it. You know, it is a little bit interesting how Steve, for whatever the reason, you know, Kent Benson's from there. Kent was one of the original guys that made Indiana great again by coming to Indiana. He could have gone to Kent. I dated Kent Benson. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. You got a long history with the Newcastle boys. <laughs> well, because my mom and was raised there, right on Riley Road, right by Steve Alford. Yeah. Okay. I just remember going to his wedding. I got two speeding tickets, one going there and one going back. And it was like freaking Princess Di and whatever his name was. <laughs> Cody, whatever. <laughs> Charles. Okay. It was wait. Oh yeah. So but wait, you I interrupted you. Ken Benson, are you saying I don't understand why he doesn't have the same fascination? Not you. No, no, no. Not that you don't understand. I've never understood why Kent hasn't had the same I mean, Kent's revered, and Kent's one of the all-time great basketball players in this state and in, 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 in Indiana. Yeah. But he not any one national championship and was player of the year. But I, Steve's – what do you call it? You called it something horrible, like charisma. I don't know what you – aura. You called it something that's just disgusting. But anyway. Well, but um, you know what, though? He Maybe if he hadn't come after Kent Ben – like maybe the thing is – I mean, I do think the last one sometimes lives like who's there been since Steve Alford. So if there hadn't been Steve Alford, maybe Kent Benson would be that guy. He came and stole his thunder. Is basically what he I did. just I, I go back to my original narrative. The Steve Alford pretty factor factors in, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You said it perfect. You didn't say it. I said it. Perfect man. The perfect man. Take out. Take out. Take out Paul Pierce or Pierre Pierce, whatever the hell his name is. Right. We're, I'm going to get hate mail. Can't wait. Can't believe you called him the perfect man, Dana. I didn't, people. She did. I did not. <laughs> I've learned very quickly he's not. Trust me. 
only because of like, I mean, when you, you, I mean, seriously though, my thing to those people is, yeah, he's, I don't know a lot about it, but I feel like they almost act like he is the one who raped someone. And that's where I have trouble. It's like, I don't get it. He did not. He isn't the one who raped the person, although he definitely supported that guy, which does you find that doesn't fit this perfect Steve Alford narrative. Totally get that. No, totally. I completely get that. And he's had to deal with that. And he has made a lot of mistakes in dealing with that as he is, you know, he's admitted and talked to people about, but, uh, my smells good. All right. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Dana. It was a great hour. Jealousy dwindles as the days go on. No, it'll never subside. It'll never, ever, okay. ever, ever subside. I'm, I'm, I've, I've been through counseling and opiates, and it's never <laughs> subsiding. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. Hope you feel better. Bye. All right. That's uh, Dana Bembaugh.